All right, I thought this looked fishy. This is, I was looking at the answer to part B while writing the answer to part A. So this turns out to be 500 hertz. All right, so we can move on to part B. In part B, we see the argument is 1 times 10 to the fifth t plus pi. So we can see that this depends on time, but there's no space component. So this is not a traveling wave, not a wave. But we can still convert it to a, the, a phasor domain and get a phasor. So we apply Euler's identity. So applying Euler's identity, we get, oh, first of course we check it that it's written in terms of cosine, and it is. So now we can apply Euler's identity, 0.5, e to the 0.25d, and then we get e to the j pi, and we get e to the j 1 times 10 to the fifth t. And then for the third step, we get rid of the e to the j omega term, t term. So here I'll disregard that. And so then the voltage phasor we wind up with only a function of d is 0.5e to the 0.25d. Now let's take a moment, okay, I'll write the rest of it, e to the j pi. Let's take a moment and look at this term. There's no j in front of it, so what this represents is that we have either, well, if it's a plus here, it's an increasing exponential. If there was a minus sign in the exponent, it would be a decaying exponential, which means our amplitude would be changing with distance d. So this is the amplitude. So the amplitude is not constant. It, this, in this case, it's growing with distance d. And e to the j pi is just a constant phase applied everywhere on all, no matter what d is, there's a constant e to the j pi phase. And this is volts. And 0.5 is the amplitude at d equal 0. Alright, then the last thing is to find the frequency at which this phasor is valid. So for that, same as the last one, we take omega over 2 pi, 1 times 10 to the fifth over 2 pi, and we get 15.9 kilohertz.